Welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. As you can see, I've got two very special guests with me today. Jess of Roots and Refuge, Jill of Whispering Willow Farm. If you guys don't know their channels, go check them out. Although I'm sure if you're here, you already do. <laughs> and today we are gonna talk with you about how to plan a garden. <laughs> Today we're going to talk with you about how to plant a garden and something that I've been so interested in is like what would happen if other gardeners came into my space, saw my garden and conceptualized it because I've always seen it one way. How do you guys think about planting a garden? What was your, what were your thoughts when you saw my garden? How you could use that space? The first thing that I think about is the light. How, like, how does the light come on this? Where is the most light? I know that I asked you that as soon as I walked out there. Where is the most light areas? Where are the least light areas? Because you can kind of look at trees and tell. The person who lives there is going to know the most. And if you're trying to figure out how to plant a garden, you really need to have a good feel of where your heavy light areas are. Because then you can utilize that. Because some plants don't need light as much. This time we were planting, when we planted your garden, a fall garden. And actually most brassicas, they'll actually grow just fine with less light because they are adapted. They're, they're more winter plants when there's less light in winter. So they don't need the full sun areas, but you know, we put the beans and the things that are more warm weather plants in the full sun areas because they need more. So that's like the main thing that I'm looking at is where the light falls. So the biggest thing for you is light. You guys should have seen her and you probably will at some point in our footage, but she turned to me at one point. She's like, how much room do I have to yeah. direct this whole thing. I'm like, because I will unintentionally like boss the whole thing yeah. and I want to make sure that I'm not being pushy here. Like, <laughs> tell me, like, where, where are the reins? <laughs> I loved it. I was like, you can have them. You can have them. Do it. So when you think about like planning and planting a garden, like yeah. how do you think about planning and planting a garden? So mine is totally different because why I grow is totally different. So for me, yeah. it's, I'm only planting what I can sell. And I need to know that I can sell it before I plant it. And so that is kind of how I go about everything. Um, we do have like a small space that we could just grow for us. But overall, I'm only, I'm thinking about what I can sell, who my consumer is, knowing when to plant that to where I'm having like succession crops on that and harvesting that at different times. And that's really what I'm thinking about. I don't, like my garden is full sun, so I don't really have to worry about that. Yep. But it's just, can I sell it? Cause if not, I'm not making money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's taught me a lot about that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm putting my Jill profit lenses on today. <laughs> so something that I noticed that I thought was really interesting was how we planted yesterday. So first of all, <laughs> first of all, we were fighting the elements, which at some point I'm sure you guys will see. But how we planted was so interesting because something I've always talked about with my viewers is making the most of a small space, like blooming where you're planted, Hey, it's a good life. <laughs> Throw some hey, it's a good life on that and like <laughs> cultivate, you know, where you are. And so I've always thought, oh, you know, square foot gardening is a great method for small spaces. And it is, but something that I've learned is not every plant is really a square space or a square foot plant. Like mm -hmm. tomatoes really need more. Mm -hmm. Like they yeah. need more mm -hmm. like two feet. Yeah. Um, corn, not really a square foot garden thing. I always thought in these terms of boxes, but then we got out there yesterday and you guys are doing like these rows and I'm like, I like that. Yeah. And then you can kind of create these layers to work with. I thought that was interesting. I think I like the visual look of rows mm -hmm. a little bit better. And the reason I do that, like for instance, you've got four feet of a raised bed and I'll do a row of rutabagas, a row of beets, a row of turnips. And I actually harvest like left to right. So mm -hmm. I'll go in and I'll start on one side and start pulling and we might have rutabagas one day and I might harvest the beets the next day. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is then I can move that over and open up space. Whereas if you've got a box, I mean like for me, it just makes more sense. And that's mm -hmm. really what it boils down to. It's funny mm -hmm. because we all planted things a little bit yeah. differently. And I was explaining how I use visual markers to like stop my row and different things like that. But it's all for me just what makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be different for a lot of people. It's not that there's a right or a wrong way. And I think a lot of people get really crippled by the idea of, oh, should I plant in rows? Should I plant in boxes? Mm -hmm. Should I do this? Should I do that? And it's like, well, I don't, you know, I can't really answer that. Yeah. It's what makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and your space. And somehow in my space, yeah, we could do rows and it yeah. makes sense. 
but maybe in another garden, or especially like a, a smaller container garden, it might make more sense mm -hmm. to do things differently. The thing I've also found with rose, which I don't know that this really makes a massive difference, I think it's really just more visual for me, but I like being able to see the different kinds of plants like in yeah. rows, and I have no idea like the science behind this, but I think my root vegetables bulb up better. And I think it's because like if, for instance, like rutabagas are really, they, they get really big greens, whereas like radishes aren't as big. And if I plant those in a row evenly spaced, like when the rutabagas are clumped together, a lot of times the ones in the middle, they don't grow as well, they don't get as big of bulbs because they're not getting as much light. Whereas if they're in a line, I'll put something with lesser greens next to it so that I make sure that everything is getting the light that it needs. I have so much to learn about bulbs. They were like, you know, we could make a, a video about garlic because, you know, it's fall and I'm like, I have so much to learn about growing bulbs yeah. right now because <laughs> my soil and, but that's such a good point, like having, you know, considering what's happening underneath the soil yeah. too mm -hmm. and making room for that. So we got your seed collection out. And basically what we did, because we were gonna help Natalie plant, and obviously she's the one who has to eat this food. And just basically we said, okay, you pull out the seeds that you wanna plant and then we'll figure out getting them in the beds. How did you choose? Yeah, so there's a lot of things that I was interested in growing um, that I haven't grown before, like these rutabagas. Because oh, these are like my favorite rutabagas. <laughs> yeah, like so many of you, you probably saw these on her stories as like mashed rutabagas and I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I've never tried that before. And that sounds so interesting. So um, some of the things I picked were just based on interest um, or that I've never grown them before or that I knew I had grown them and liked them. So like, yeah. I love growing leafy greens. Yeah. I love growing peas. I have had very little success with beans. So I'll be super interested to know if our beans make it. And I love fresh herbs. So yeah. we picked some basil and stuff like that. But yeah, so we picked a lot of stuff that could be for fall mm -hmm. because that's gonna do well with the trees and the shade and stuff. We picked a couple things that are gonna do better in warm weather and being in yeah. zone 10 hopefully they work that. yeah <laughs> yeah we picked like the frost tender uh things and then had what i think was probably one of the coldest little weekends <laughs> <laughs> didn't get close to freezing <laughs> so yeah we picked we picked like fall varieties mm -hmm. but some that might also do well in <laughs> warm weather yeah except for this weekend yeah. <laughs> when the polar vortex or whatever it's called <laughs> dipped all the way down <laughs> Really, all that frost tender stuff, I mean, it's fine unless it freezes. Like, it'll be fine. So, how do you guys plan for that? Or what do you recommend keeping an eye on? Just the frost? Um, if it's getting, if I look at the forecast, and it's forecasted anywhere down to about 34 or 35, which is like, one to two degrees Celsius. Like, I mean, like, if it's getting really close to freezing, I usually, if I have something I'm concerned about, I'll cover it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't take much to protect a plant from frost in a warm area. Yeah. Because you gotta think, your soil is a lot warmer than the ambient air. And so you're really just protecting that plant, the foliage from the air, if you're just close to freezing. Now, if it's getting down like well below freezing, it, those minor measures won't help. But if it's close, mm -hmm. you can really protect stuff. And like, that's why I was saying, hey, let's put all of the frost tender stuff here kind of close together in your garden. That way you can get like one frost fleece br blanket, like a bit of fabric, and you can just cover it over everything yeah. and it'll be fine. Or if you're in a container, you can just take straw and mulch it. Yeah. Like you don't even, or you can just buy like the wire, the nine gauge wire, which is really inexpensive. Yeah. And just keep those up all the time. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I do. We keep those up. And then when I'm worried, I just put plastic on it. Yeah. Or a sheet or whatever you have. Yeah, you can use a bed sheet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I've done that several times. <laughs> <laughs> all you're trying to do is just a little bit of protection yeah. on those tender yeah. plants if it's getting close or right. Even at freezing, yeah. you can protect them with a bed sheet. So it's a combination of what's happening with the moisture in the soil and the moisture outside too. Yeah, and another thing is, is if it's gonna get really close to freezing early in the day, like water your garden really thoroughly mm -hmm. because that insulates the cell walls. Because what happens when a plant freezes is the cell walls explode. So like insulating the cell walls keeps it. And that's why like brassicas, kales and all that stuff, they just have a lot hardier cell walls. And oh. you can kind of tell the difference. I don't know, lettuce is really soft and yeah. but it's, still, it's still frost. Party. That's so interesting. Yeah, because yeah. you can you can taste which ones are tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So the other thing that I thought was so interesting when we were out there was how you guys think through having enough for a home gardener like me. Like I'm not growing for profit. Yeah. Um, I don't have a huge family yet. It's just my husband and I and little one on the way. <laughs> um, and so knowing how much to plant to be able to harvest something for dinner, like how do you guys think through how much you need to plant? I just over plant. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason why I do it. I just, I just plant for the amount of space. I always want to use whatever space I have. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever have any empty space, you know? Yeah. For me, it's like, I think it comes with experience of kind of knowing what you need. I remember the first time that I did raised bed gardens and I was doing kind of the square foot garden thing and I planted like one little area of beans and I remember how disheartening it was to go out and harvest eight beans every yeah. three days. And I mean, I had like a family with kids. And so it was like, what do I do with these? Yeah. It was literally like, I have to go buy more beans from the store to put these beans yeah. in so we can't even eat them. Everybody gets a bean. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I've so been there. And so for me, it's like when it's something like that, like that's why I said, okay, let's really fill in this space with yeah. beans so you can harvest them a lot at mm -hmm. once because I would rather overshoot that than undershoot that mm -hmm. and that's why like with the snap peas it was like okay let's fill out this whole back area um with the leafy things and the roots you have such a big grace period because you can harvest a beet that's an inch across or you can harvest a beet that's three inches across so you can just eat those fresh as they come in over the course of time so you mm -hmm. could plant a lot or mm -hmm. a little doesn't matter mm -hmm. But it's mostly those things that you got to think about, okay, how much of this do I actually need mm -hmm. and plant enough to make that work. And, and be generous if you can. Be generous. Yeah. Be generous if you can. That's mm -hmm. really the, the main thing is to be generous mm -hmm. if you can. Something that I thought was interesting too was that you guys were saying it's, we like to sow seeds like, you know, crazy and throw them everywhere and are you okay? That I was like, yeah, go for it. And then you guys were kind of telling me what I could do with the extra because yeah, yeah. obviously we sowed more than really should be in there. Mm -hmm. And so some of the things that we planted were things like pea shoots. Like you guys were saying we could harvest the pea shoots mm -hmm. early and throw them in stir fries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other things, if you're over sowing to kind of make sure you have enough, like what are some of those vegetables that you can do, like pluck earlier, thin out and use? Like pea turnips. Shoots? Yeah, turnips you can put on salads, on omelets, mm -hmm. you know, with your eggs or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the micro green green right, over the, here. The beets, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can do like beets. I grow mm -hmm. those just as like micro greens, you yeah. know? So really it's like, you could use anything out there. Most really. anything. I mean, your nasturtiums, bean, bean shoots, yeah. young nasturtiums, yeah. most anything. Now, when you get into your summer stuff, I mean, you're not usually picking like pepper seedlings <laughs> <and> tomato <laughs> seedlings <laughs> to eat. But with all that winter stuff, pretty yeah. much anything that we put in that garden, if you have to thin them, you can use them. And they have so many nutrients. And like so much flavor. It's so good mm -hmm. for you. You have a choice with a lot of things like lettuces or kales or like the turnips or the beets and all that. With your roots, you want to thin them at some point so that they can grow roots. If they're way too crowded, they just aren't going to get roots because they're fighting for resources and what the root is is the storage mm -hmm. so like you they need to have the ability to get enough resources to store something mm -hmm. yeah. so if they're super compact they won't but you can let them start to grow and they just get little tiny ones you can take those and eat them like little baby beets and so you have this like window that you can start thinning like I rarely go out and say okay I'm gonna thin everything all at once because mm -hmm. I don't need that much food at once but I will start picking radishes when they're like little teeny tiny and I just thin them that way and eat those and baby greens, salads. Like I almost always sow, like if I'm sowing kale, I sow it super thick. And then when I'm thinning, those are salad kale, mm -hmm. baby kales. And I just leave one every 10 inches to grow into a big leafy plant. Yeah. That's so interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. Cause I never, I always think of thinning and my heart kind of breaks a little bit. I'm like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I have yeah. to pull you out of the garden. But that's as a, somebody who's loves sustainability and like using the most of what you have, mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, you can use that. No, yeah. you can eat and that. And like she said, like they taste way better. Yeah. I mean, their super, flavors are just so yeah. there. So good. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. excited for that. See, I had never thought of that. I love how other people think through things. Cause I had never thought of like, Oh, over so, and then use that. It almost becomes like a succession thing. Oh, Bless you. <laughs> it almost becomes like succession. You yeah. Know. Yeah. That's really Absolutely. cool. And it's a great way to optimize a small space because yeah. you're getting food now and food later. Yeah. Which was my last and final question, which was, do you have any advice for people growing in small spaces or urban spaces or? Yeah. I recommend what you're doing, like the raised beds you have 
when you think of raised beds, we think of raised beds on the ground, usually. Yeah. What you've done, like you have no grass in your backyard, mm -hmm. and that is impressive. Like, I know when we talk a lot, you think, ah, oh, I just don't have a lot of space. Like, what you've done is incredible. Yeah. Thank you. And then container and pots, you can grow a lot, especially if it's just you or, you know, your right. husband or whatever. You can crank out a lot of food in a small pot or grow bags or, you know, like a green stock or something like mm -hmm. that. You can get a lot of food in there. And I always encourage my viewers is just start. Like yeah. you don't know how to do it or you don't know what you're going to need or how you're going to need to adapt that or adjust that until you just do it. Mm -hmm. So start small. That way you're not overwhelmed and then grow from there. Mm -hmm. As your knowledge grows, as you feel more comfortable, expand. Absolutely. I, I think that for me, the main piece of advice that I'll share is I actually did a video that's okay. Is that okay for me to like talk about that? I don't <laughs> try to plug my stuff, but I did a video talking about growing in small spaces because a lot of people don't really understand the harvest that they're getting from a plant when they plant it. Like yeah. they just, and I, that's okay. Like I remember the first time I grew okra, I was, it was like a revelation. I'm like, wow, that is weird. I did not know that's how okra grew mm -hmm. in these upright pods on these massive tree like yeah. plants. I just didn't know because I'd never grown them before. You learn so much by mm -hmm. just starting. But like when you plant one beet seed, you get one beet. And that becomes a, you know, a multi-use thing when you eat some of the greens and you can start harvesting the greens as long as you leave some, it'll still grow a root. And then you finally get the beet root, you harvest it and that plant is done. Um, kale and leafy greens are so versatile because you can start harvesting those lower leaves and just let it keep growing. I've got kales that are like this tall and they're naked up the first like eight inches because we're harvesting mm -hmm. off of them and they're just going to keep producing until they go to seed. So you're getting a lot out of your space. you got one plant and you're going to be harvesting breakfast or lunch off of it time and time and time again. Whereas like a cabbage or a cauliflower or a broccoli, you're going to have this massive plant that's going to take 75 days and you're going to get one head of cauliflower, which is great if you have the space. But if you have a really small space, it's kind of like, is that really worth it? You know, to get one meal's worth of food. Now you can make that a little more versatile. You can use the outer leaves of a cabbage or a cauliflower or broccoli plant or brassicas. It tastes like a really thick cabbage. Saute it, use it in like egg rolls and stuff like that. But mostly I would not suggest growing stuff like that. And so it's just a little bit of understanding that's required to make sure you're growing plants that are gonna be versatile. Sowing your peas really thick so you get pea shoots and pea plants mm -hmm. with pods. You know, and just making the most of that space and not giving, because we could have just planted you eight heads of cauliflower yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Instead, we planted multiple mm -hmm. meals worth of greens mm -hmm. and roots. That's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. yeah, considering the space too is yeah. huge. Yeah, I was like, I have so much respect for cauliflower and broccoli. <laughs> in the store I go, I'm like, wow, this was a whole place. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. You're yeah. getting it, even the organic ones, you're getting it for a few dollars and you're yeah. like, this is crazy that this How? is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or the cut and come again varieties. Yeah. I do a lot of that because you're buying the seeds once, you're sowing it yeah. once, and you're able to harvest at least two or three times off of that. Yeah. So for me, I mean, you're getting a lot. For a yeah. Little. I wonder too if that's why I've, I've enjoyed leafy green so yeah. much is because I don't feel like, oh, there is that one square foot yeah. of space that I've wasted. It's like, oh no, I can go back and. Yeah, I love you know, that. Like, they're it, my favorite. I think yeah. if you're gonna, if you want to grow like broccoli, for instance, grow sprouting broccoli because mm -hmm. you're just gonna get yep. more from it rather than a heading broccoli where you just get one. And I actually just grow everything because I have a lot of space. But for people who are a really small space, those that makes a big difference mm -hmm. in the satisfaction that you're getting from your garden. Because yeah. while I love the experience, the harvest really is mm -hmm. the you know. You yeah. want that. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope that's been valuable to you guys, fellow dreamers and fellow urban gardeners. Um, I hope you guys have learned something from How to Plant a Garden with Jess of Roots and Refuge and Jill of Whispering Willow Farm. Um, if you guys don't know their channels, go check them out. Although I'm sure if you're here, you already do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us today and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>